Hey there friends, Alex Lux here and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very special developer review for you. Yes, I am reviewing the iconic Kodak D19 high contrast developer, but more importantly, one of the two commercial, modern commercially available copies of it, and this one from Alberta-based Flick Film. I'm talking of course about Flick Film's MQ19, but like any review, let's head back to the studio. I can discuss a little bit about what the heck is this developer and how to mix it up from the powder, and I'll meet you right back here in a few. Flick Film's MQ19, as the name implies, is a metal hydroquinone developer and is one of two commercially available clones of the classic Kodak D19 developer. The other is Photographer Formulary's replacement D19. D19 is a fast-acting, high-contrast, low-fog developer designed for photographers working in the field and sending their negatives over the wire for newspapers and other periodicals. Thus, it can develop your film fast, but at the cost of having a higher than normal contrast and a little bit more grain. As the name implies, it has two active developing agents, that is metal and hydroquinone. And one of the best parts is that if you know the formula, you can actually mix it up yourself from base chemistry. If you can mix up any powdered chemistry, then you're already halfway there to being able to mix up MQ-19. Unlike the photographer's formulary kit, Flick Film provides a single powder blend in which to mix up your single one liter volume of MQ-19. You start off with 800 milliliters of water heated to between 50 and 55 degrees Celsius, add in the entire pouch and then mix. Now you can either do this by hand or as I use a magnetic stir, which makes life so much easier and mixes it up a lot faster. Now the one thing you're going to note is that my chemistry looks brown. Now if you remember Kodak ran into this problem where there was a contamination in the coloration. Usually it's clear, but in my case it's brown, and they also face that with Dectol and D76. Now I found that it does not affect the overall quality or longevity of the developer. Once you've come up to about 80 to 90 percent dissolved, top up the volume to the full one liter, mix until it's completely dissolved, and then use a funnel and a fine mesh strainer to pour into a opaque storage bottle that is well labeled and stored in a cool dry place. Now if you are someone who has the inclination to mix up the developer yourself from base chemicals you can purchase all the constituent components from either Flick Film, Photographer's Formulary, or a similar supplier like Bostic and Sullivan. The formula is 500 milliliters of distilled water at 50 degrees Celsius, 2.2 grams of metal, 96 grams of anhydrous sodium sulfate, 8.8 .8 grams of hydroquinone, 48 grams of monohydrated sodium carbonate, and 5 grams of potassium bromide. Mix these chemistry in that order and then top up to the final 1 liter solution and then, like the kits, you store in an opaque bottle in a cool dry location. All right, so despite my developer ending up brown, I have tested it since and have gotten some good results out of it. So today I'm in Oakville, Ontario, walking along the beautiful lakeshore of Lake Ontario in Kerr Village. I'm just a little bit west of the historic Old Town. I have a roll of Kodak Tri-X loaded into my trusty Rolleiflex 2.8F, and I'm going to be rating it at ASA 320, so a slight overexposure and I'm going to be developing it in MQ-19 at a 1 to 4 dilution. All right, so let's get walking and see what I can produce. Let's do this.
Historically, D19 was used in the field for fast developing by film photographers so that the turnaround to get the images to the publisher was enough to make it for the next publishing time. But it also found use in developing X-ray films in a medical settings, infrared films such as Kodak HIE, and technical and graphic films, TechPan and Codalith respectively. It also is a great way to develop dry plates like the modern JJ Lane and Zebra offerings, but I also like to use it as a developer when I want to bump up the contrast, either due to low contrast lighting conditions or if I don't like how low the contrast on the film is naturally. As for good film stocks, I like what it does with Ilford Pan F, Delta 100, Rolly Super Pan 200, Tri-X, Foma Pan 400, and Adox HR50. But you can also use it on modern infrared films like Rolli IR5400 and Ilford SFX200, just to give it that extra punch when you see fit. Okay, well that covers all 12 frames in here. I've only seen this combination used once, so I honestly don't know how these are going to turn out, but hopefully I got 12 really good shots that I have shared with you at this point, or at least 10. But either way, let's head up the stairs, get back home to the lab, and get these things into the tank for developing. And I'll see you up the top. When it comes to using Kodak D19 for developing, including the formulary and flick film versions of it, there's no special tip, trick, or technique. In fact, MQ19 is a developer that is designed to work in less than ideal conditions, with its background being a field developer and medical developer. It works fast and it works effectively, and, it's, and a lot of times you're looking at short development times. You can use it in both hand tanks and rotary systems. In stock form, you can develop 60 rolls of 35 millimeter or 120 rolls of film and the equivalent number of sheets in one liter of chemistry. And that is in its stock dilution. In dilute form, it immediately becomes a one-shot developer, mix and dispose of. And you can use it at dilutions between one plus one and one plus four. Although a majority of the times you're gonna find online, is either in stock dilution or one-to-one. -one. The one thing you'll find, however, is the lack of listed development times. But in stock form, a good starting point is five minutes and for one-to-one, -one, nine minutes, and then just adjust from there. Although there are some outliers based on film and speed. For example, the roll of Tri-X I developed for six and a half minutes with a one plus four dilution when shot at the box speed of ASA 400. Because of the fast acting nature, I do recommend using an acid stop bath for a full minute, but if you don't want to use that acid stop bath, maybe two to three minutes under running water. And then just use any rapid fixer to finish off the roll. I went into this review expecting a lot of high contrast images, but ended up being pleasantly surprised. The trouble with fast acting developers like MQ19 is that you're trading expediency with grain and contrast. But don't let that worry you too much, because if you pair the developer with films with low to medium contrast and existing fine grain, MQ19 won't make too much of a splash. I found that with T-grain film, the visible grain is only increased slightly and the contrast is improved to a more middle ground on low contrast films. Even films that are naturally high contrast, the contrast isn't increased too much. 
to, to compress that tonal range. But this time I worked with some faster films and films noted to have high contrast. And you know what? Even in those cases, the results are pleasing. The one thing I did notice is that there is little difference between stock and dilute forms of the developer when it came to the final image quality. Okay, so that covers it for this video. Let me know in the comments, what is your trick for increasing the contrast of your film? Do you use a high contrast or contrast increasing developer? Or do you prefer to underexpose and push your film in development? Let me know below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell notification icon, so you know when I release new content. Right now in 2024, that happens on Wednesdays. And yeah. If at all else, give me a thumbs up if you like it, and if you don't, give me a thumbs down. Doesn't really bother me. Until next time, friends, shoot what you love, with what you love, on what you love. Don't give in to the hype. <laughs>